um, topical anesthesia. Um, we have a various burrs. These burrs, um, generally, we're going to open up a tube with a round burr, okay, because we're going to go deep into the canal. We're just going to make sure that it's um, a round burr and a high speed hand. Let me get my high speed. Okay. Speed hand piece, piece in order to access the canal, and we're going to have a various types of burrs. Um, this is a curette. This is to remove soft tissue and any decay within the cavity. So this is considered a curette or an endodontic spoon or an endodontic spoon. Okay. Do you see how it's long enough so it's going to go in there and scoop anything out? Is that also called a spoon excavator? No, it's an endodontic spoon. Okay. Yes, it is the same the same. Um, this is just longer. So okay. they just have a different name. Um, this is an endodontic explorer to explore the canals to find out where the canals are inside the tooth. As you can tell, it's kind of um, pointed as well. Okay, so what we've done is we've opened up the canals, we've removed any decay, we've located the canals. After we locate the canals, we're going to remove. We're going to remove the nerve with the barbed brooch. What a barbed brooch is? It's kind of like a. Um, uh, no, it's like a barbed wire fence. And what this does is it goes into the canal of the tooth, and it removes the nerve. So that's what we would we would remove the pulp with the endodontic. Kind of feel it and see what it look, feels like. So does it kind of like grab the nerve and like twist it around it and pull it out? Yes, that's exactly what it does. Comes in different sizes too. They come in different sizes, depending on how large the tooth is. Then we have our various uh, files. Um, the files come in 10, 15, 20, they're by fives. And so what we would do at that point after the canal was out, we would use, starting with the 10 file, the purple file, we would place the purple file into the canal, and then we would look and take a picture with the canal. So this is a picture of a endodontic file in a tube. So what we're doing at that point is we're learning how long the canal is. Each canal is measured. So what we would put on the on these little files is these are rubber stoppers, okay? Rubber stoppers is gonna tell us how long that that particular length of the canal is. Because what we want to do is we wanna pull out everything inside the canal, but we don't wanna perforate the canal, the apex of the tooth, meaning to go straight through the apex of the tooth. Okay, we do not wanna do that. We wanna make sure that we're just filing, and what we're doing is we're filing and smoothing the areas out. These are just like little files but they're small enough to get in between the tooth. Um, the difference is, is that they get thicker as they get, um, as you go up in numbers. Okay, you so. see, did you call this a barbed brooch, No, these are files. So then you get your files, mm -hmm. the barbed brooch is what, um, the green one that we passed her. That one? Yes. Yeah. This All is the different. barbed brooch. Mm -hmm. When we locate the canal, we use the bar brooch to get the nerve out. And then we get the nerve, we pull it out, we kind of like, like spaghetti, it looks like spaghetti, so like pretend like this was the nerve. We would grab the nerve and we would just pull it out with this, okay? Then, after we pulled the nerve out, we would go in and we would start filing the canal, okay? Filing and smoothing the canal in different sizes. After we smoothed it a little bit, we would take our x-ray to find out the size of it. And then we would have each file ready to go with the right length. Okay? So we would have our files in something like this, which is a file folder. This is a rubber dam. This is a rubber dam frame. This is the rubber dam clamp. This is the rubber dam hole puncher. This is the rubber dam clamp. Doctors use a rubber dam. Doctors will use a rubber dam um, 
so that the patient will not choke or anything go into the patient's mouth. Okay. Generally, they'll do it for ortho, I mean for endodontic procedures because um, they use a solution to irrigate the canal that's called sodium hypochloride. Does anybody know what that is? Bleach. It's bleach. It kills all the bacteria inside the tooth. So this is our dam clamp. This clamps on to, to the tooth, like that, okay? Clamps onto the tooth like this. Is that a gingival? No, they're numb. So you, would, you wouldn't put that on when they're not numb? No, or when they're getting numb. And it goes like this. So all we see is that one tooth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, and so endodontic patients, this is ideal to use on them because all we need to look at is that one tooth and we want to keep the rest of the mouth dry. How do you uh, suck this light up? Um, you go underneath it and you just, um, after it's on here, you kind of just like lift it really quick and then suck it out and then that's it. But a lot of times they don't salivate a lot at that time because they just don't. Sometimes it's a lot, but hardly. Because they're older patients too, generally people who need root canals. Okay, so once we've reached uh, file 25, we are going to irrigate the canal with sodium hypochloride, which is also bleach. It could be 50-50. Okay, we're going to irrigate the canal. Um, after we irrigate the canal, we're going to use our paper points. Our paper points are used so that we are able to dry the canal. We would go um, the same thing. We would measure our paper points. We would take our cotton pliers or their locking cotton pliers, see how they lock, okay? The reason why they lock is so that they can grab the paper point here and then dry the paper, dry inside the canal. And I can also hand this to the doctor if the doctor's the one drying the canal. Or we can dry the canal. That is an RDA function, to dry the canal, and we'll be doing that tomorrow. So we use these, and we keep handing them to the dentist until the canal is dry. Once the canal is dry, this first procedure is called the open and drain. Once this area, um, the tooth is dry, we would put in what we call formal creosol, which is also a medication. It kills any, um, any material or any infection inside the tooth. We would dip it in here. We would place it inside the canal. We would then take um, our glick. This is called a glick instrument, okay? We would take our glick instrument and we would use a little bit of cavit. Cavit is a temporary material and we would place that on top of the cavit, okay? Place we, we, would place, the we would place the cavit on top of the tooth. We could use it with a glick instrument, or this is called a beaver tail, either one of those, um, and a condenser. So we could use either this or this instrument for that particular motion or that procedural step. Why wouldn't you use air to dry the canal? Um, why wouldn't you use air to dry the canal? Because air can't get all the way deep down into the canal, one. Secondly, these paper points are so thin that uh, it's very precise to make sure that there is no water inside the canal. How would you know that the canal's dry? Like, would you just keep using them until they're, oh, okay. Until they're hard and they don't, um, there's no yes. moisture on them. Oh, and also nice. it gets, to sh um, the dentist can see, sometimes there's, um, it's like a yellowish color, mm -hmm. if there's infection still inside of the canal. Oh, okay. So it works in two ways, it's like a visual as well. Then what we would do. How many paper points would you go through? Oh, you'd probably go through two packs. Um, for one tooth. For one tooth. Really? How many do you go through? A pack? Four or five. Packs? No. These? Yeah. Yeah, it depends on if you're doing an anterior tooth or a posterior tooth, too. So you would make sure that you're done doing that. After you put the cavit on the tooth, you're going to check the tooth, um, the bite. So you'd use your articulating paper and your articulating holder. Okay. The you give a one week later, the patient comes back. This is called the open and drain appointment because we're draining the infection out of the patient's tooth. The patient comes back a week later. 
we have the same procedural steps. We can anesthetize or not, depending on if the patient is um, would like to. We don't. This particular step, we do not have to do because the nerve has been removed from the tooth. That part's optional. We have our basic setup. We have our um, HVE. We can also use um, a surgical suction. The surgical suction is used to get right on top of the tooth. Since it's small, it can get right on top of the tooth. This is called the surgical suction. And what was that used for? Um, to get right on section sectioning the tooth, the canal. When you're removing the when you're removing the temporary. Um, no, when you're irrigating. Oh, okay. for irrigation. So then we have your basic setup. You have your cotton pliers, surgical section. Um, this is an endo explorer. We have your endodontic spoon or curette. And then see, it looks like a little spoon to remove debris. We have the two sets of cotton pliers. The locking. Inside the tooth mm -hmm. and then the bed, right? Yes. Okay. So when we open up the tooth again for our second appointment, what we're going to do is we're going to remove the cotton pellet from the tooth or open it up again with our high speed hand piece. Remove the cotton pellet from the tooth. That's going to go up for our HVE. <laughs> we're going to find the canals. We're going to use our gauge glinton to get into the canals and to widen the canals. Gates Glitton. They're called Gates Glitton. What, uh, what is that after? These are to open up the canals. To make sure you were getting deep in the canal. So again, to smooth the canal. I don't think it has it on this paper. Is there no smoothing on Yeah. What's that? So you it is on here. Remove the temporary. Smooth thing. and enlarge the canals. Um, that's going to be with the Gates Glitton and also with the files. Gates. Gates. Yes, it said right on here. Gates and then G L I D D E N. These are drills. This is just another um, way of getting down into the canal. Is we are going to seal the canal. So we're going to irrigate the canal again with our irrigating solution, sodium hypochlorite or 50 50 um, with water. We're going to seal the canal. So this is called root canal prep. We would mix this together. This is the ceiling. And we would start handing the doctor gutta percha. Gutta percha are these points. They're kind of a plastic uh, material. These will go into the canal in order to strengthen the canal, in order to strengthen the canal so that we can feel it. They're kind of a plastic, synthetic type of material. You can feel it um, later. But what you're going to do after you place the seal you mix the sealing um, solution together. You would then place the sealing onto the gutta percha, and then you would place the gutta percha into the tooth. So the gutta percha is now inside the tooth, and then we would use our plugger to get this is a plugger because it's blunt. So that pushes it into the canal. Um, it pushes the gutta percha into the canal vertically. The spreader, we would use the spreader to open the canal, to spread it open, just to make sure that we got all the gutta percha inside the tooth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So then I might have one large gutta percha in the tooth. Okay, so I'm gonna put one large one in the tooth and it might be followed by a bunch of smaller ones. So they do come in different sizes. So you can put multiple in the canal? Yes, so you're gonna place multiple gutta perchas in one canal. And how I do this is I use the plugger and the spreader in order to get this deep into the canal, okay? So the spreader has like a little tip on it, um, pointed tip. The plugger has a blunt tip to it. 
so we placed our gutta percha. We have it sealed into the tooth. Um, now what we're going to do is we're going to cut off the gutta percha from the top. And how we would do that is we would use our flick instrument. We would light and get it nice and hot. Because these are plastic, after this is hot, you could just cut off the tops of what's sticking out of the tooth. So I'm going to do it for you, but it's going to be something like that. Because it's plastic, it's easy when it's hot to melt these and those go away. Upside, inside the HPE. Okay? And then what we want to do is we want to take a final x-ray to make sure that we got down to the apex. And um, then we would place our temporary material, which would be IRM or it would be Cabot. And then we would refer them back to their regular dentist. Yes. That's a lot.